For my lecture on Monday, I've been um, um, can give you uh, some glimpse about the uh, you know, geometric interpretation of the endoscopy theory and the proof of the fundamental lemma in the Gabriel algebra. So the aim of my talk today is, is you know, to some attempt to to go further to generalize this approach to more general situation. Uh, you know, go beyond this. Uh, Go beyond this case of of, um, of adjoint action uh, in Lie algebra. So this is still very much uh, work on progress. So we do not have uh, um, any uh, definite result, but I think we still have some kind of good ideas on how to proceed. And this is uh, uh, for today's talk. It's a joint work with. Uh, Benedict Morisset. So, but before coming to this, I would like to still to um, to do some recap uh, on the what I, uh, I explained on Monday. So we have G uh, uh, reductive groups. Over fin K, which can be finite fin for many main applications. Uh, G is Lie algebra. So uh, on G, we have action of G by adjoint action. And have the commuting action of GM uh, by by just by scalar multiplications, right? And uh, we form the uh, uh, we form we form the quotient stack of uh, G by G by adjoint action, and this uh, this stack this algebraic stack map into the invariant quotient. So the invariant quotient again is uh, it's just the ring of, of invariant function, G invariant function on the Lie algebra G. So this is an, an, a finite algebraic variety, finite type, and this is an uh, algebraic stack of finite type. Uh, all right, and um, uh, uh, and one of the main tools in this you have the open subset G rec of G. Which uh, uh, consists in the regular element, uh, which are element whose uh, centralizer have the same dimension as the rank of the group, uh, or in other words, the, the orbit, adjoint orbit, has maximum dimension. Right? And uh, so we have this open embedding, uh, and uh, one of the, you know, one of the main advantage in this situation, which is a not going to be true in general. Only this map is is a smooth map, and uh, uh, on the fibers are uh, uh, um, a geohomogeneous space. So after quotient and by G, this is a gerb. This is a gerb. Bound by some commutative group scheme. On the, um, uh, the the regular centralizer. So uh, J is um, this smooth group scheme, which is characterized by the properties that if you uh, let me call chi the this characteristic polynomial map and chi rec is restriction to the regular locus. Then the, you have the, uh, the nisomorphisms be, between J and and I G rec. So I is each of the centralizer group scheme. Right, and this is G equivalent. 
and it takes some de some decent work to prove that this thing ex exists and it is unique uh, with this datum. And moreover, and the second statement is that uh, these isomorphisms can be extended to a uh, uh, homomorphisms uh, from J to I. So this is fairly elementary um, observation, but it is very crucial in all these constructions. And from the Stucky point of view, you can say that this, this is the same as you have have same reduction to B of J. So B of J is uh, uh, is classified space relative to this base. Act on G mod J, G mod G, and it act. Simply, transitively, on G rec mod G, which exactly means that this is a jerk bound, uh, bound by J. Right? And you know, if you can, you know, just, just take some some abstract nonsense to define the uh, uh, something like G mod G, and then mod by B J. And then, of course, uh, it's in contain uh, G rep mod G, uh, mod G, mod BJ. And because this action is simply transitive, this is just a base. So this is the G mod G. Right. So in particular, uh, so if this map into, into G mod G, having leave over this uh, GIT quotient, and uh, uh, and this is an iso this is this is an isomorphisms, and so this is an isomorphisms over over G mod G regular semi simple, where there's no difference between, between you know everything is regular over the regular semi simple focus. All right. So from this you know, one we set up and you know get some getting get used to this. Uh, uh, Construction, then it it fairly um, very agreeable to uh, to have geometric interpretations of uh, of stable orbital integrals or cap orbital integrals. For example, if you take D to be uh, the 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 spectrum of the form on disk, uh, and if you have a, a map from uh, A uh, from A from uh, from D to uh, G mod G, and then the the stable orbit on tangents of A, you respect to the you know you are basically interested to, to this basic function in this case the characteristic function of the of G of O uh, is the it is the mass of the group of it of map from D uh, to this quotient. Which lies over A. Uh, and with respect to the uh, to, to some uh, the this measure on the you know if to define open integrals, local open integrals, you need to normalize a measure on the on the centralizers, but you have one his canonical, and for this purpose his copy canonical is given by. By J A, which is A star of, of J, right? You just decide that the volume of of, of J A of O of this is this is O is one, right? and then uh, you know when you unravel all the definition, you get just get to the even definition of of stable orbital integrals, and if you have um, if you have C, now it's a, it's a curve, a smooth projective curve uh, over K, then you actually have two um, things you can map to, either this, this double quotient or just G mod G. So if the first one is now A is the map but, uh, from D 
2G mod G. But now uh, I have to fix the live bundle and the live bundle over C. And so that this over mod by mod GM and the, so the lie over, over this lie bundle L, a BGM, uh, then the, you know, the, the open the weather appear in the, in the, uh, on the geometric size of, of uh, trace formula for Lie algebra is really the, just the mass term. So now it's no longer this function, but it's something modified by, by, by this L. So let L to be OC of D, some divisor. Then you can uh, defy you know, some, something like this, but scaled by D, and, uh, 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 which is the integral of uh, the G and uh, T sum over G, uh, some gamma in G of F, conjugate C, that's a, that map into A. Right. So this is the, exactly the, uh, you know, the, the part of the, um, of the geometric side of the trace formula uh, for Lie algebras with these fixed characteristic polynomials. And this is, a, uh, this is the same for, this is the same as the, the mass of the map from C to G mod G mod, uh, mod GM that lies over, over A. Right. So we, so, and the, uh, uh, and we also have the, uh, And if you, we, uh, instead of this, if you choose map from A from, uh, look at the, the mass of, of D map to the, to the double quotient, maybe mod GM, mod BJ, it's a lot of mod. And then this, look at this, and this give right to the, to the product formula that allow you to express some global stable open integrals as product of global stable open integrals. And this rely on the fact that, uh, you know, assuming that A, the, the image of C into G mod G, the image of A intersect with G mod G, re regular semi-simple is non-empty. Uh, then uh, you think the fact that uh, the this this thing is the nisomorphisms over the regular semi-simple locus, then you can just uh, write this group point as a product local group group point. I have two what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. So let let, let so let, let this is the double face DC. Okay. You know, it's different, of course. And this. All right. Yes, yes. Everything everything commute to GM. Okay. Yes. All right, so, uh, so, by, uh, um, so in this formulation, you have this give rise to the map from H of M to A, and this is the Hitchin vibration. So A is a, is a set of map from D to this, this, and H is the map from, uh, from C to, to this quotient over A. So obviously, this give rise to this kind of abstract you know, uh, packaging of Hitchin vibrations, and the fibers uh, give rise to these counting things. And doing this is, uh, 
then the another structures that if you have H from C to uh, this um, G mod G uh, mod GM, then uh, for J is the GM equivalent, so we can define uh, J A is A star of J, and you have uh, this give and P of A is the toxus of J A over C. Uh, then you have P A. Sorry? This is A, thank you. Then you have PA act on MA and act simply transitively. On an open subset MA rec. So, so in family, you have uh, this map of G from P to A. Uh, and acting on M over A, right? And I, uh, I try to make the point that, uh, you know, this is uh, fairly complicated. You have very little explicit knowledge about this, but you can describe this quite, you know, as, you know, almost completely. And uh, uh, we have, now we have a quite rather good tools to, uh, you know, to derive the cohomology of this, just from this, you know, I said that there's two uh, set of tunes. One the uh, kind of support theorem, um, which kind of dealing the Hitching fiber itself in my work, and then it's kind of very kind of large, is extended by the work of Mick Lorini and Shende to basic to any situation. Uh, and then there's another set of work uh, using periodic integration coupled with uh, mirror symmetries. Uh, Kind of more restricted, but it's still kind of uh, amazing somehow uh, by uh, Wies, uh, by uh, Groschenik, Wies, and Ziegler. So, so one, you know, let's admit this fact that you know we can, you can somehow concentrate to studying this, right? And then let's on this support theorem and periodic integral take care of the, of the of the remaining. Of course, this is a lot of work, but for this, it just consider this to be. You know, and to look at it later. All right, so let's look, uh, have a, a look on this regular centralizer. And that's the part I, I, I want to, you know, to generalize in a fairly version on group actions later. So from this point of view, it is crucially important to understand uh, to, you know, how to given A from C to G mod G mod GM, and then describe PA, the, the, Pika, uh, the Pika stack of J toxin. Over C, right? And in, for instance, the, what is completely significant for endoscopy is to, to how to compute the compute the, the group of components of this. So this is the one that really control endoscopy theory, and the other one is uh, to you know to fit into the support theorem and control singularities of Hitchin vibration is the invariant delta of A. And so uh, let me write here then P A is. Uh, you know, if A is uh, over geometric uh, algebraic closed fins, and P A can be right at B of I A, some some finite or you know some group or some maybe some also can be diagonal visible groups, and P A. So this is the inertia part, and this is now just Hornist uh, algebraic groups, uh, which can de decompose further at, at the connected part at the pi not of a PA and PA and now can decompose into in, is it become extension of Nabilian varieties by some uh, some connected 
connected affine group. So this is the Chevalet structure theorem. Yeah, not. not, thank you. Yes. So all this is canonical if you are over some C of K bar. And you can, of course, you cannot put it on family. It's has some trouble to put this thing in family, but you can, as, as, as long as you're concerned with invariant, you can do this, and then that A is dimension of R A. So now I'm, go I'm going to explain you how to um, compute this uh, from invariant theory. So this is the pictures you have this, uh, this one, the picture that I want to replicate in genomes. So this is G, and this is a, a GIT quotient of G by adjoint option. Um, and I have G rec of G. But here I have to use the, uh, the basic knowledge here is the, if this is the same as T mod W, this is the Chevalet. Restriction theorem. We say that the, the ring of G invariant function on the Lie algebra is the same as the ring of Vi group invariant function on the Kapton algebra, right? And um, and here I have uh, it, it comes, of course, with this cover, T mod T mod W. And this is the flat, this is very important, flat Galois somehow. W cover of T mod W. And in, if you, you know, kind of have ever, ever studied the Hitchin vibration, this is can be called the universal Cameron cover. I mean, of course, why do we give this name to Cameron cover to, to this T to T mod W? But, you know, on the when you study spectrum covers, Cameron covers, this is the, the one that induces upon Cameron cover. <coughs> All right, so, so this piece of structures actually give you a, a, the, the thing is this, uh, this, the, uh, this another piece of structures give us a, a very nice, uh, um, a nice description of, um, oh, this is, Very nice description of the regular centralizer due to Donna G and Gasgory. Of course, you have one because this is the gerb and the J is the group scheme that bow that gerb. But that doesn't say much, you know, that is. Now we want to kind of radical different description that's much more usable for any kind of computation that come from this. So it is essentially, so we have this, uh, you have called this something very close to J, con J1 in B. So let me call this thing pi, this is chi. So pi is finite flat covering. It's going to be pi. So this pi lower star is the very restriction of, T mod T W. So, the, so you see this as the constant group scheme over T. This fiber is just the, the, the torus, the fixed torus, right? And W act, so this is um, because the fact that this thing is flat, so this very restriction preserves smoothness, yes. I think Knob had this same description 10 years earlier. It's on the, on the, on the, um, let, let's come to this. Yeah. So I, maybe it's, 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 it's some dope here, but um, yeah, I, I, I should have studied no better, but I, I anyway, you have this, uh, this is a smooth group scheme over, over T mod W and um, you take W invariant, right? So, uh, so when you do the very restriction, the dimension is multiplied by the degree of this map. So that is kind of n factorials. 
But after taking the, the invariant, you reduce the same degrees. So this is genetically is a torus. So when this map, where this map is uh, is etan, finite etan, this thing is a torus. It's defined by by the maximal torus, but twisted by action of W. This is basic qualities. And extend because it extends to a finite a smooth group scheme because it's, this this pi is flat, right? And uh, uh, you know the way I would like to rephrase Donald Gessgeri, the big knob, is that there exist a canonical homomorphisms from J to J one which is almost an isomorphism. So what it, where it fails to be an isomorphism is about connected component. So the fibers of this may be not connected. When you take the W variant, you can create component on the ramification locus. And this may not cover all the component that you get. But at least, so that what does it mean that you can say that J naught? So let J naught to be uh, over J is, is, uh, is open. Uh, group scheme of a uh, neutron component of J1, and to say that J and J1 have the same, you know, neutron component, that means that J not map to J. So we have J is somehow sandwiched between J1 and J0. Neutron component of the fibers, right? Component of fibers, yeah. I mean, I mean, it doesn't make sense to take a couple of engineers. <coughs> and uh, so that's it. So they have uh, this J, the regular centralizers coming from this G rec, some com coming from some gerb, can be described by some kind of Galois description on this side. It's just by descending, Galois descend from the, um, from by the constant torus, right? And the all is subtle, some kind of subtle information is kind of discrepancy between this. And this can be can be um, uh, expressed by root systems. So it's rather uh, something rather subtle. I don't want to get into that because this is the part that we got far away to try to generalize. And they had to be do as a property to have case by case. So this by I'm not sure that Knob do it. Maybe Knob have this map. He has done it. And all the components. Okay. So but one of the very remarkable things. So, so, so on this, so they are um, the quotient, the J mod J naught, and J one mod uh, J are just finite shift. Right? It's no longer smooth groups. It's not representable anymore. Support on the on the on the ramified locus. But what is really remarkable, you know, from when you look at the description and you know you can rephrase it in, in a good way, then if you uh, exchange between G and G duon, and then you have the J1, J0 of G duon mapping to, to J of G duon, mapping to J. By the way, the, the base is the same for, for, uh, for both of them after molding out by GM. The only difference between the GM. Uh, um, yes, so there's very remarkable fact that um, that you know this is this is somehow the the finite group space change. So this part is this is A and this is B, and for the flip over this become B dual and this become A dual. Right? So what does finite shift mean? Uh, it's a, a, a shift with an topology, is, you know, everything is finite. You just kept a connected component. Uh, finite. Shift finite groups, yes. And this is, this is you know, this, that, you know, I think it appears in the, you know, more or less in the work of, of Chen and Zhu. This duality is in, in, in Chen and Zhu. When they prove the uh, give characteristic P proof of the uh, of the uh, of the mirror symmetries, for for Hitchin vibration, uh, 
of G and and G dual. I mean, you can, I, mean, you can, I just I, I realize this argument, so although it, it wants to go off road a little bit, you know, um, uh, So this is invariant, you know, by checking W, and this can be said like co-invariant, because co-invariant is obviously have connected fibers. So this is invariant, W invariant, and this W co-invariant. Right? So, so you know, on on the over this covering, you have T and T duon. The maximum torus of dual group, a kind of dual, dual torus. And if, you know, by pushing forward, you should have a dual situation. It's kind of obvious. And one time, take W invariant, and the other side, you take W co invariant, so they remain dual. I mean, it works to do it, but that is the, the basic argument. Uh, and, and then you have duality between this and this, and then duality between this and this, and you can recover the duality of what you want by the fact that you have the duality of this discrepancy. Right? This is the, this to, the one way to rephrase. Maybe I think Chinese will argue, argue a little bit differently, but I think that is uh, very close to their proof. <coughs> and, uh, and you can see that, you know, for, for example, the, when uh, G is adjoint, then this is zero. And on the other side, um, uh, it's simply con when it G is simply connected and J equal to J1. So this becomes this. So duality between this and, and this is just a K between adjoint group and simply connected group. So the between, the, the thing between this, the adjoint group and simply connected group is really be captured by this J between J0 and J1. Right? So let, let me write it down. So, to, so, so G is adjoint, then J0 equal to J. And G is simply connected. Then, uh, then J equal to J one. All right. So this is one thing that is this mirror symmetries uh, thing, and had to be very precise mirror symmetries, and that gives right. You know that is basic piece of information you put in to fit into the in periodic integration uh, machine. All right, and so the other thing is, you know, for example, if so, no, for, no, let not say, no, forget about this duality thing. You want to compute the uh, to compute the pi not of pa, then uh, uh, then so instead of looking at j, is that we have a very gray bone, we have this covering. So it, it's not always so easy to work with group scheme and. Uh, and so on, because it's very nice when you have to do abstract construction, but to, for doing any calculation, you rather have covering and, and things like this, so it's easier. So we have A mapped to, to this T mod W mod GM, and then this, this, is, the, this is the universal camera and covering, and then have C T of A, and this is a Cameron curve. Cameron cover. Right. Don't know the Cameron cover. It just pulled back from this the quotient. quotient. And uh, you can prove that in the, if if we write lambda to be the group of, of co-character or the maximum torus, uh, then you can prove that it's the pi not of PA is essentially Oh, oh, sorry. This is this is uh, this is a cover, but it's it may not be it can be reducible, right? Can be have component, and if you choose a point, if you choose the point of of C tilde inside C of tilde, then the then you can choose a component, and that gives rise to a, a subgroup sigma A inside the Y group. So that is the the Galois group of discovery. Right. And with the choice of C Tinder, you have um, give rise to a canonical homomorphism from lambda from the, from the group of co-invariant 
uh, the group of core characters. So this is the free abelian group, but when taking the core invariant, you can you can have torsion, and that map is subjectively to pi not of pa. And this is isomorphisms if G is adjoint. Right, so this is very simple at the adjoint case. Otherwise, I have to take care of this A and B, which is kind of rather sad on, but you know, you can you can deal with that. But just think about the adjoint case that you just have an isomorphism. So this is the first thing that so somehow the pi not of PA, uh, this group, you know, that that kind of geometric version of this on this obstruction group with Galois cohomology is really can be computed geometrically by this kind of co-invariant space. The, so the other things, the other thing is the other thing is this uh, the other thing is how to compute this uh, how to compute this invariant then of A which is dimension of the phi part, then you, you can use the same covering. You can use the same covering here. And just by normalization, so you have this. So generically, if A is very generic, this, this is the CT naive, which is smooth and reducible, but then it can be degenerate. So what you do is you do can see what I see a flat and sit in the A. This is not the same as shown a flat. Uh, so this is just a normalization. Of the Cameron curve. So now this curve is still connected, but now when you do normalization, of course, you're going to separate on the irreducible components. And uh, so, so and so we have the, um, this is just capture the difference between this and this. So delta of A is a dimension of, so let me call this C, which is going to be C star of O, C tinda flat A, mod O, C tinda A. So this is going to be a, a vector, a finite dimension vector space over the things because this, this map is an isomorphisms almost everywhere. And then take W invariant. Right. So, you know, that is just say that it, it is, you, you can compute everything from this perspective when you have this camera uncovering, right? the camera uncovering. Uh, and it's, of course, it's very important to have it everywhere, right? It's not, you cannot, uh, be happy with the regular submissive locus because on the information you want is you really encode on the singular locus. Right? So now, uh, any questions so far? But now I'm going to move on to the more general situation. Okay. Uh, yes, this, there is a formula. So there is so delta is locally is dimension of the five spring of fibers, and the five spring of fibers can is roughly the half of the degree discriminant. Right, but the, this, the, the degree discriminant may not be may not be even. So it has to be correct by some terms, some kind of color terms. That is basic Kapnikov formula. So they have kind of d minus c over two. Right. So it's delta is always less than, and D is the intersection of the curve with the discriminant divisor. But the, the delta is somehow more sudden than the, than the D. The board again. Yes. 
So I, I really want to generalize this into the kind of the fairly general situation. M is uh, a fine, the normal varieties acted on by, by a reductive group G. Right? And maybe I want to have some another commuting action by Z. If you're a torus, maybe a finite group is most of the a torus. And try to have these pictures, right? So the examples I have in mind, of course, this adjoint situation, but very close, it's a G acting on G by conjugation, which of course gives rise in a part of the, the you know the bona fide trace formula. It's not the algebra, the algebra, which is kind of more riches. And actually it's kind of because when you work with the uh, you know the the real trace formula, you, it's not enough to to do with the, the Cartesian function of, of G of O every time. You have to do with heck operator on the side, and that gives rise to the kind of more situation and G acting on G, acting on M, which is a monoid, some kind of reductive monoid. And one of the main one is the Winberg monoid. So I'm not going to explain why, how it is connected to heck operators, but just to bit more than time, the more time than I have, I have. In, in, your two, in your example, your first example, is Z the center of the group? What's your Z? Yes, Z is the center of the group, yes, yes, yes. And you know when you have a G with the theta involution and you have this action of K acting on P, it's kind of symmetric space, and then you can have the situation is spheric on varieties. And one of kind of more it can all look similar, some like some kind of depart from this advanced in, in, in some sudden aspect. But there's one example, I think very important example, which is kind of much radical different in the case of uh, G acting on M, so on the commuting varieties. And I try to explain why this example actually is very important. It's kind of the Mazda examples. Uh, so M is, you know, is, you know, in the simplest case, X1, X2, Inside the Lie algebras, such that x, x1, x2 equal to zero. Of course, you can make it the groups so have commuting actions, and G act on this by, by you know, by diagonal action, diagonal adjoint action. Right. All right. So that is what kind of example you want to um, to set out. Uh, and of course, there are other examples, but there's one of the kind of framework that should be really perfect uh, to, to, to do this kind of study is the, uh, this paper by Luna Richardson. On the generalization of the chevalier Rashid theorem. So, um, for some technical reason, Lunar Richardson assumed that the characteristics of K is zero. So we cannot use it for a finite group, but I think it, it's fairly technical. And then, you know, if you work enough, you can, you can remove the assumption in many cases. But just not to stick for this for the time being. And um, uh, you know, you cannot expect this situation in, uh, in general, they have one assumption, but Lula Lagrange to put out the one single assumption is very nice. It is so he assumed that so Luna Richardson hypothesis, basic hypothesis. It it just the so uh, you have a definition have close orbit, 
that you don't have any definition, the orbit which is closed, and have regular orbit, that means that the uh, uh, a maximum dimension and lunar Richardson hypothesis is just assume that there exist a closed regular orbit. And that's it. That is kind of the first thing that to go to uh, allow it to star uh, this machine or so in the case of group, whatever the case is, kind of there exists regular submissible elements, right? Uh, that is both close and regular. So, and this actually um, fit exactly then from this, the existence of the close regular orbit. So let con X in, um, let con X in M such that GX is, is close and regular. And in, in particular, that implies that the, the, the stabilizer is reductive. Right. Where the orbit is closed, the space is affine, so this is affine. So this is the same as G mode, GX, so maybe just call it this. And so GX has to be reductive. I mean, you can have connected components, but this is reductive. And um, there is one, um, so in most of the case that I'm interested in, I mean, I do not have not explored the case yet, but it should work to a certain extent, but I just assume, so let's just come back to that. So there is, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a major piece, not very difficult, but it's really interesting here is the lunar uh, slice it down, it, uh, it turns like. So the consequence of, you know, we apply to a closed orbit only. It doesn't need to be regular, but it has to be closed. And the, 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 the imply the fact that there exists a G inv invariant open neighborhood of M such that, such that for every for every y inside this u, then the stabilizer of y is conjugate to a subgroup of g of x. And that is what the, in the concrete application of lunar slice and tell you, that you, know, you, as long as you assume that your orbit is closed, you can create an open, that is image of the etan slicings, uh, so that the, um, at every point, the, the stabilizers get smaller, cannot get bigger. But, you know, if by the, by the, by the, this, uh, this assumption that the GX is both glow and irregular, it cannot get smaller, it has to be get bigger, because the, on the orbit has the smaller dimensions. So, by this is mean that, you know, this imply Close and regular, that means that, that uh, GY and up to the connected component things and GX are conjugate. So this is very important thing that very, very sky of light and rather natural assumption that there exists a close and regular orbit that imply that the, the stabilizers on a large open sub varieties form a just one conjugacy class of group of G. Right. Sorry, uh, to be clear, is this M equals Lee G satisfy this hypothesis? Like oh. if, if M is a Lee algebra of G. Yes, of course. Closed, yes. Is the regular, is the regular orbit closed? No, but the regular semi-simple orbit is closed, both closed and regular, right? When you have regular semi-simple oh, orbit, it is closed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. But not all regular are closed, but the, the just, uh, there exists one regular, uh, one regular and closed orbit. That is the assumption. You are not asking that all regular orbit are closed, of course. That it would, that would that be very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right.
All right. So you have the. So this is a lunar retraction. Lunar retraction hypothesis that implies that there's some. So let's call it T in G. Some uh, call the, uh, some reductive groups. Subgroup of G, so that the stabilizers are almost even is, is T. And go, we are going to assume that T is a torus. So we assume now that T is torus. This is not strictly necessary, I think, but you know, at the at the stage that you are, I just prefer to assume this to, to make my life easier. So in all the situation, they this is, this is true. That the, or maybe not all, yeah, but most. Okay. All right. So um, and actually, uh, they uh, so the genetic stabilizer. Yes. So there is an open open variety of M where all the stabilizer are conjugate. That they can take. All right. All right, so now let the, then I have the, um, the now, now the lunar recharcent survey uh, restriction theorem. So it's, 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 it's amazingly general, uh, gen, general. You know, you just don't need very few assumptions. He, uh, so let um, let G acting on M. So M is again normal of five varieties, and uh, so that that U inside M, you call what you call the principal uh, open subset, which in in R. Terminology is oh, it's just a set of regular semi-simple things, you know, it's either. <coughs> and then uh, for every x in U, you that gives the G of x is T. And T is the one, uh, it conjugate to, to a fixed reductive subgroup T inside G. And that is just think by as a torus. <coughs> All right, and then they, and this is the maximum torus in that joint case. So the what they do is it just well it, the notation they take f it should be the fixed point of t, right? You see the same as cut algebras, the element that is uh, fixed by the action of t. And uh, of course, if for example, if m is is smooth and t is a torus, then f is also smooth, right? The fixed point of torus is this smooth. It m and variety is smooth. And um, and so for with T you have the uh, normal on this you have the action of the normalizer of T. Right. Of course, it is contained the centralizer of T, but this it doesn't act trivially, so you have to be careful. Not like in that joint case, the centralizer may not act trivially. <coughs> but uh, the uh, theorem is that the uh, you have the isomorphisms. Between M F mod normalizer of T and M mod G. So this is a Ludwig Richardson theorem. Well, there may be a something that I forget, but it is what it says. <coughs> then it very 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 general. All right, so uh so we seem to be getting close, you know. We you know from our piece over there, you have this m mod g, then you have this m mod mod g, and you have this m rec that exists. It's just a regular orbit, right? And then you have kind of complete whatever we have here. You have this f mod normalizer of of T. Right. 
And what I really want is to, to have uh, something that's similar to KNOP, right? KNOP, uh, Lunar Gas Gorgeous in this, in this general case. And when we have, sorry? That one, yes. So here there's one problem with this thing is it's not finite because it has it has centralizer, right? But of course you can, you know, the as becoming very simple, you can do FF divided by centralizer. Let's see, and this is finite covering, right? It looked pretty good, but then you can get stuck at this point. Why? Because the, this map is not flat. It's not flat. Uh, and I explain why. And this map is not, is not smooth. And fibers are not, not homogeneous. It's not even flat. Right? So how can define regular centralizers? Because the, the, the argument was that this is a job and the regular centralizer is a, is a, is a group that bounds that job. And this is very far from being a job, right? So you don't even have a question to start with. And of course, on the other side, you, you have a problem that this is not flat and it, it, there's no hope to, to formulate uh, something that's similar to don't know category. Right, at this point, but then um, you see, there's one thing that, you know, when you look at this on, on this side, you see that you are doing something kind of rather, you know, too naive. I mean, some the discrepancy, because when you study with the um, regular orbit, you really think about regular orbit, whether this quotient, this invariant quotient, is about the closed orbit, right? The, the set of a point on this is a closed orbit. And what you want to understand here is the, are the regular orbit, some kind of open orbit on the fibers. So it, uh, so it, that is where discrepancy come, come in. So let me come back with my list of examples. I hope that I haven't erased it. No, I think I erased it. I have to start over again. So it actually fends on the very kind of simplest case next to the adjoint case is G upon G. By conjugation, it works well when G is simply connected. That thing works if G is simply connected, acting on G. But otherwise it doesn't work because in this case, if G is not, is not simply connected, then the T mode W is not regular. Right. So, so let, yes, yeah, so this is more than F mode W. This thing is not regular. This thing is not regular, right? And because this thing is smooth, so there's no way that this map is smooth. So this thing is regular. This, if this is smooth, this is smooth, this has to be smooth. But it is not. And what is this is kind of very, very familiar situation when you start with stable and open integrals from groups, because there's still elements that are uh, regular but not strongly regular. So that is have to do with element regular semi-simple element. Which are not not strongly regular. That means that the, the centralizer is not a torus. So it's typically G equal to PGN2. PGN2, and if your X is this matrix, usual matrix, then the, the, star, the centralizer G of X is the, it's also the normalizer of the torus. Right? It's not commutative, right? And this is that, that violates our wish here because you want the regular centralizer is something that is smooth group scheme. And a smooth group scheme is um, if it's commutative on the joint fiber, it has to come up everywhere. 
So certainly has some something, some problem with this have to deal with. So this, this is not. So this is the first problem dealing with the the fact that this is this 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 thing is not regular. So this is GIT quotient. Not smooth. So the, the when you look at G act on uh, act on on M, the Winberg monoid. No, and now G there is simply connected. Then you do not have this problem anymore, but then on the boundaries, then the, um, whatever the map M, um, M red, uh, mod, uh, mod G. On the boundary, on the boundary of monoid, So let me call the key rep, then key rep uh, minus one of some A uh, are not homogeneous. That means the, 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 you have finitely many, but a lot of orbits, something like a two to the power of cosecant number or something like that, or the nimpotent in the, in the nimpotent fibers. I have like two, some two to the power something regular orbit. So it's very big, you know, it's finite, but it's rather big and com combinatorially quite complicated. And this, this problem also happened in the case of the, of the um, also happened in the case of the symmetric space. I think it's known for a lot of, you know, maybe from Costan Rallis, but uh, it was, uh, I think that uh, Leslie um, Spencer, Spencer Leslie, uh, sh showed in some case then the then the nimpotent, then two nimpotent. I cannot hear it. Um, the cyclic group chain show classify how many. Yes, yes, this is this is all of Jing and Chi, yes. As uh, Jing and Chi and just based on the on the earlier work of Lustig and, and her. And there's there are two important regular orbit in some in some case. So this is by Spencer. But the, but it's thin, so it just some kind of, you feel that, it, you know, the, the, it departs from the, from the adjoint situation just lightly, right? You know, it's just, instead of one, has finitely many, and it just, uh, it's smooth, it has some kind of, you know, orbit for singularities, uh, which is not, uh, I mean, uh, but then when you look at the, how many times do I have do I left beyond this? Um, 10 minutes? No? Uh, yes, yes, 10 minutes? More than 10. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So in this case, you know, let's look at this guy of G. It should be G and Len. And M to be x1, x2 in, in the in space of matrix, g and ln, but x1, x2 equal to zero, right? And um, uh, and in this case, um, you are basically having, uh, this is the same that the, you have the x1, when you have two commuting matrix, then 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 the you can the vector space can be a modulus over the plane, right? So your v is k to the n, and up to x one, 
and x2, then z become a, a modules, finite module under this. I'm doing a polynomial two variable. So we, we are working at, at, at finite module over, over, over the polynomial and algebra. And from this point of view, you can write that m, you can compute in this case that, and it can also can be derived from lunar reconstruction theorem that m mod g, in this case, is the same as the Cho, uh, Cho n of A2, which classify um, uh, zero side corner beam of length n on the plane, right? So you need to have n this separate point. But when you collapse, you don't look at the scheme structure, it's just room multiplicity, right? And uh, this, uh, this, also this equals also the, the, the particular of okay, this. And this is not regular. Right? Even in scale of, of n equal to two, you have a two square divided by s two. Right? This is you have a case of singularities in, uh, in this. <coughs> and then, but you, you uh, and of course, you know when you have a, a and in this case the. Uh, um, uh, it is this case the M rec mod G is actually more difficult to describe. What do you mean that it's regular? But at least it contains um, the M rec mod G. Um, it had to do with, at least with the Hinbos scheme. Of A2. In this case, any case, this map is not flat. Because at zero, and you know, on when the, the, the cycle is only concentrated at zero, you can make a lot of, of sub scheme, right? Uh, and that is that is a Hinbos scheme at zero. In this case, the you know, at least I can can say that is correctly that M rec mod G in this case contain strictly the Hinbos scheme. No, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going too fast. Anyway, all right. So this is difficult discrepancy that you see from from the um, from the uh, no no sorry I, I'm coming to this I, I just go too fast so this is this point. So. How to you can even you know, you know take into account on these examples? How you can can kind of restore some level on these situations? So the first thing you have to do is you know we have to to give up with this this quotient. This quotient is not the where the regular central ladder should live in, but there's another quotient that I call the uh, regular. So we have a quotient m. M rep mod mod G, which leave over M mod mod G. And this is very naive things. The on the K point, it's just a set of regular objects. Right. So this is somewhere in between the stack quotient and the invariant quotient. There is something in between. And naively speaking, you just put together on the regular orbit. Right. And actually, it's not that difficult to define it because the, the, the set of points is just the same as the isomorphism class of MOG. And the MOG is come up with the inertia group, right? And what if you should divide that by the B of the inertia group? And that is what, what we get here. This is basically the, this is the same, basically the same as M mod G divided by the B of the inertia group. Conducted component. M regular. Sorry. M regular. M regular. So why you have to take I not here instead of the of the full centralizers? This is because of this this phenomenon, right? The phenomenon here is that the centralizer is not flat, even over the regular locus, right? Be, be, because it's not commutative at some point. 
But when you just remove some kind of the extra comma, it becomes flat. At least in characteristics, though, it's clear because the flat is the complete dimension of the, the, the Lie algebras, and because dimension is flat. Right? So, and so this, this is Raudify, and this is the almost a space. This is just the Lindman Fox stack. Smooth stacks. Right? And it just feigns the failures from, uh, from being a non jailbreak space. It's just coming from these little things, right? just, just the, the discrepancy. Um, Between the uh, the the i not and i i over i not rec i i rec and i rec not. So for for example, in this case, you have in in this situation. So in this situation, you have the uh, this t mod w. Which is not, which is not uh, all the same as the G mod G. It's not regular, but we have this G rec mod G. This thing is regular, right? But it's the said some so we, we trade a point singular point here, the orbifold singular with the with the minimum fog thing, which is smooth, right? And um, uh, so this thing, and also we have just by by, but now we have, when you have this, uh, you have this map from M rec mod G over the M rec regular quotient. Each tautological is, is a gerb. It's a tautological because uh, we define the point as orbit. So on the, and it is smooth, maybe smooth and uh, the fiber is homogeneous, and this is job is bound is bound by a, a smooth loop scheme. Which is some some J over this regular portion. And so, so now let me try to modify my, my this board. So we have another thing here is now the M. I think it's I not. Yeah, it is just I not. But the I not the same. At least when it's commutative. You know, it's, assume that I is commute, I not a commutative. It is sent to this quotient. So we have a replacement of the regular centralizer. It is no longer live on the GIT quotient. Which leave another quotient. It's kind of, kind of regular quotient. In this part is kind of entirely tautological, right? You just give a definition, but you know you really want to have at least one piece of non-trivial information on this. How you can connect it with this, right? We, we, we still want to have this. Now, now you have a, a smooth group scheme over something. We really want to describe it. Um, Form some uh, kind of don't guess go from this camera covering, um, but we have a problem. This is not flat. So this come from this. How have to uh, study this? Uh, close is this example of uh, example of this example of the.
of Himbokchol Himboski. Of A2. So this map from this map from M rep G to M G in this case is the in this case the M rep G to M or G. So this is the Cho N of A2. And this is roughly Hinbosky. This is a regular quotient. It Hinbos scheme is contained as an open subset of this. Although this is proper, so this is not separated, right? In the scheme of A2. So at least you can concentrate in this part of the things. And of obviously here you have regular centralizer, because when you have a finite groups, finite subscheme of A2, you can take the, the invertible element on that finite subscheme. That is your regular centralizer, right? Uh, so you want to you want to describe that thing from here. So how 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 do you can construct this? Um, how you can construct this um, covering, right? Uh, so here the covering in this case is is it's just A two. To the n uh, and put, right? So in other, uh, so this is not flat, right? And here you have in both scheme that is some some kind of z inside a two, right? This is finite sub scheme. Of length n, and then you know what you want to to fill up this diagram here, and the obvious thing to do is just look at uh, some kind of flag where length of of z i is i, right? So this going this guy of the Himbert team. I have nested in both scheme, but it just happened that this thing is pretty bad. But this already, it, it is, um, it is uh, generically, generically uh, etal and galois of, of group um, SN. Right, but but this is rather bad. So we have this Hindberg. This is Hindberg zero in A two. So the the locus, the regular semi simple locus, and this is a tan. Right. So this is something you see is defined kind of natural to nest the scheme, but it just turned out to be pretty bad. It's not flat. This over a regular locus, this is very nice. It's um, uh, this is um, uh, a time gala group, but then there's kind of very, really, very really beautiful theorem of Hyman. Sorry, it's just on point are separated, so the cyclone is on simple point. Regular yeah, regular semi simple locus the Hyman. It's just a closure of the. The schematic closure of Hinberg zero Tinder in Hinberg Hinberg Tinder is a flat cover. So the upshot is you have you know, whatever it is, but if you start from the from the cover on the regular semi-simple locus, it does extend into something finite and flat, right? Uh, and this is conjecture here. That is the the the, the um, so there exist a finite a conjectures a finite a flat. 
cover of of M rep mod G. It coincide or fully coincide with this thing. Center G go to F. Let con this pi coincide with pi over a, a dense locus. And that is this canonical kind of that is going to be a Cameron cover. So let me say you how I mean the, I don't we don't have a complete proof of this, but I almost so let me explain give an argument very quickly in two minutes how you can prove Hyman theorem. Hyman theorem actually is pretty difficult. I mean I I try but I haven't run through on his argument. Um, but there is actually the Hyman proven thing much stronger. He proved this thing actually even um, Goran's team, right? To, to pull flat there, just have to pull that this thing is, is, is Cohen Macaulay, right? Because this Hinbos scheme is smooth. It's finite Cohen Macaulay by the uh, miracle flatness. This is going to be flat. But uh, Hyman proved that this Gorenstein, Gorenstein, and uh, Cohen Macaulay, of course. But I, I, I don't have any argument for Gorenstein. But I think you have some kind of rather simple and general argument for Cohen Macaulay. Uh, so that should be in general in that case. So how does it work? All right, so the um, thing is this, you... Um, so the assumption is regular, the, the setting, the general setting we have here, right? With M break is smooth. One and uh, at least the base, the, the rec is smooth, yes. So we want the... The, the regular part is smooth, then you should have the, uh, this flat covering. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, how, how do you do this? It, you know, um, the thing is that you, you have the, um, you have the, um, you know, after localization, this becomes just uh, um, uh, in, a, in the, in the in the central line, just give me one minute more. So in the central larger scheme, you have locally, you have D element inside, um, uh, inside your Lian algebra, depending on some parameters, some smooth base. And uh, you want to create a flat covering of the base, right? And when you have, but you, you have a flat covering, just checking by one element at a time then the element is just given by the characteristic polynomial of that element. So it just has a product of on the characteristic polynomial. And then you have a big flat covering of your base, right? This is flat covering and your base is smooth. And then your, your it's kind, of, kind of big thing is, is Cohen Macaulay, right? And what happens, whatever we put back, is a component of that Cohen Macaulay thing. Right? Because it's, it's, um, uh, it, it's very irreducible. And then your Galois covering over some regular locus is just a component of it. So what you have to prove is something like um, an irreducible component of something Cohen Macaulay is Cohen Macaulay, and that you are good. But that is not quite true. But it, it's true in this kind of miracle situation, in the kind of miracle flawless situation, because how you how you want to prove you had how you want to to prove it, you know, when you have the thing you know, to, to prove in Cohen Macaulay, you had to, to have regular sequence, right? And then, um, and every time you divide, the dimension go down by one. That is what Cohen Macaulay do. Well, in, the, in general, you cannot choose these regular parameters. But when you are a regular base, you can just choose the, your coordinate on the base, right? And when you choose coordinate on the base, because of the thing upstairs is, um, is finite and flat, the big, the big things, Flat and then it, the, it is injective regular element. Inside one component, it is, it is also regular because of component, so it's a, it, is a, it is a domain, right? And then by some back thing, and then you, that is a regular element that cut your dimension by one. And to continue induction, you have to do you use some kind of back thing. Your element had to be general enough so that when you cut that, that slice into your component, it's still irreducible. And then you continue to go on. So, so that is at least some rough argument that can give very simple proof of Hyman theorem in this case. And I think it, it, it should be enough to, 
you know, to have conjecture is fairly many case. All right, stop here.